Hi, I'm Lari, and welcome to month three of your at-home strength and sculpt training program. What you need for this at-home training program is dumbbells, bands, long bands, and mini bands. And you will also need a workout bench. Now, if you don't have the workout bench, you can replace it with an ottoman, with a chair, with just some sort of elevation. If you need an additional substitute, please feel free to comment below and I would be happy to give it to you. Now, this is not my typical follow along workout. This is a workout for you to do on your own time, at your own pace, and to progress yourself. During this intro, I'm going to go over how to follow this program. Then after this intro, you will see every single exercise demoed. First thing that you need to do is go into the description of this video. Click on the Google Sheets app link. That will take you to the program. Once you open that program, that program is locked. You're not going to be able to edit it, write down your reps. So what you need to do it's just simply make a copy. After you make a copy, it's your own and you're going to be able to record your sets, write down your sets so you can progress weekly and write any additional notes that you need to make for yourself. Be sure to record your weight with the number of reps you achieved every single exercise for every single set. It's very easy to forget what you did the week before. So make sure that you record it so next week you can get even better. Because we are using a progressive overload technique in order to get better, to get stronger, and to achieve your goals. So every single week you can progress either with weights, with reps, with tempo, better form, and or just a better mind-muscle connection. There are many different ways to progress yourself. If the previous week you were on the high end of the rep range, I would suggest increasing the weight. If you were on the low end of the rep range, you can either stay with the same amount of weight and try to increase the reps or do a little bit of both. Make it your own and try to get better at every single exercise. We will be following this program for a minimum of four weeks. My goal is to have a new program out for you guys every single month. However, you can definitely follow this program for longer than a month. I typically have clients follow a program anywhere from four to 10 weeks. And that's going to depend on the individual and their goals. In this program, we have five training days, three on, one off, two on, one off. Of course, you could rearrange it however you see fit. The order of exercise is listed alphabetically and numerically. So for example, if we have two exercise listed as A1 and A2, we're going to complete A1 and A2 before moving on to B1. If you have any questions about that, please comment below and I would be more than happy to answer them for you. As far as rest periods, they are not monitored, so take as long as you need in order to perform your next best set, unless otherwise specified. The first week we are getting used to the exercise, so this is our acclimation week. This doesn't mean easy by any means. I still want you to challenge yourself but really concentrate on making great form and great mind-muscle connection. Week two, we're gonna try to get a little better, try to bump up the weight. Week three, even better. And week four, best week yet. A little terminology, AMRAP means as many reps as possible with good technical form. So there are some sets where we're going to perform as many reps as possible, but once we cannot move the weight and or our form starts to slip, the set is over, we have failed, and failing, my friends, is a good thing. That's how we get stronger. Tempo, I do have some tempo listed. The first number is always the eccentric or lengthening phase of the muscle. So I'm gonna take a bicep curl for example. The eccentric is the lengthening phase as we lower the muscle gets lengthened. The second number is the number in between the eccentric and the concentric phase. And the concentric phase is the shortening or the contraction of the muscle. So eccentric, second number is the pause in between the eccentric and concentric. The third number is the contraction and then the fourth number is the time between the concentric and eccentric. That's probably very confusing at first. I totally understand. It will get easier with time. Just always look for that first number and remember that's where we're going to lengthen the muscle. For this training program, all muscle groups are being worked. There is quite a focus though on building that hourglass shape. So building your delts, building your lats, building your glutes, and strengthening the entire body. Again, if you have any questions about how to follow this program and or need a substitution for these exercises, please comment below. On to the demos and happy training, my friends. Our first day is a lower body day and we begin with banded monster walks. Maintain a little baby iso squat throughout. 
and you're going to walk 10 steps forward and then 10 steps back at an angle. This is really going to warm up and prime up the glute medius. Our first exercise of the day is a TRX hamstring curl with a very slow tempo. Be sure to maintain a neutral spine and pelvis throughout. The tendency is to wanna to let that pelvis spill forward into an anterior tilt. So keep your core tight throughout this entire movement. Maintain a three count concentric and a three count eccentric. That's what's really going to light up your hamstrings in this movement. Now, if you don't have a TRX strap, you can replace it with an exercise ball, same exact movement, or for your dumbbell alternative, just perform lying hamstring curls, slow tempo throughout. B1 is a dumbbell static lunge. Keep the majority of the weight in the front foot. So try to use that back foot as little as possible to really bias that front glute and quad. As the reps decrease, be sure to increase the weight as those reps lower. Really challenge yourself with the weight selection. You can perform C1 with a barbell or a dumbbell if you do not have a barbell handy. You're only performing the top range of motion. So think about performing the top 50% of the motion. Keep tension in the glutes throughout. We have a three count eccentric and concentric two count pause at the top. So during that two count pause, really squeeze the glutes. Again, as the reps decrease, increase the weight. You will perform D1 and D2 on the left side before taking it to the right side. Brace yourself with that off contralateral hand. You'll really hit your hamstrings and glutes here. Keep your spine as still as possible. After D1, we take it right into D2. It's a drop. So we take it right into a dumbbell B stance RDL on the same side for our drop. And we're hitting the same exact muscle group here. Just really hammering in the hamstrings and the glutes. Keep the form locked in as you start to fatigue. Perform E1 with a long band if you have it available. Brace yourself here to help stabilize the spine. So try not to let that lumbar spine dip. Make the connection to your glute and we are burning out that glute medius. If you don't have a long band available, just grab your loop band fabric or latex and perform the same movement pattern. We superset E1 with E2 banded wall sits. So you're abducting into that band. If you could exceed 60 seconds, I want you to add a weight to your lap. It's gonna have to be a big weight or else it'll slip in between the lap. So if you have a plate available, do that to make it more challenging. On to day two, which is our push and core day. And we begin by warming up the shoulder, keep the elbow in tight and just open up the shoulder with your band horizontally. For A1, perform it in a seated position so we can really bias and hone in on the medial delts. Pretend like you're pouring a glass of water at the top and keep the dumbbell slightly in front of the body to bias your medial delts more than your upper traps. Increase the weight as the reps decrease. For B1, set your bench up to approximately 70 degrees. This slight incline will really bias your anterior delts a little bit more. Maintain a slow three count eccentric throughout every single set. And as those reps decrease, increase the weight selection, keeping good form and good range of motion throughout. C1 bodyweight pike pushups. It's just an inverted shoulder press, slow control tempo. If you could exceed 12 reps, you can challenge yourself by elevating the feet. supersetting those pike push-ups with banded lateral raises at a quarter rep at the top. So during the pulse at the top, make the connection to the outer portion of your delts. Try not to let the shoulders rise up towards the ears. D1, dumbbell neutral grip chest press. That neutral grip will really hit your chest, your triceps, and your anterior delts. Maintain a controlled tempo. For our dumbbell seated tricep extensions, 
at a pause during the stretch. Try to keep the elbows fairly tight to the body. We should feel this in the triceps. We then end our day with a tricep burnout, beginning with bodyweight Spider-Man plank push-ups. Draw your knee towards the elbow as you perform this push-up variation. Now this one is super challenging. So if needed, release the knees to the floor of the mat and perform a regular push-up. We then go right into bodyweight high to low planks. Be sure to alternate sides. So go left, right, left, right, and then right, left, right, left. Keep the core tight and try not to let the hips rotate open. So we're working on anti-rotation of the hips. To modify, just drop the knees and perform the same exact movement pattern. Limit the rest time before ending with bodyweight rolling planks. Just take it side to side, burning out the delts, adding in some mobility, and working your obliques and core. To modify, just release the knees to the ground. And that's day two. Day three is our pool and ab day. So go ahead and start with this banded warm up. Anchor the band right in between the chest and chin level. You're going to pull the band towards the face and then rotate the shoulders open for this great warm up mobility exercise. We're starting out this day hot and heavy with this triset, our pull up triset. And we start with the most challenging variation of this pull up, which is a pronated pull up, slow tempo, five count eccentric, one count pause at the bottom, one count pull it up, two count pause at the top. This one is tough. Now, if you don't have a TRX strap, you could replace it with those barbell rack pull ups. If you have a pull up machine, use that or here is your dumbbell substitution. Have a pronated grip and perform it with the same exact tempo. What's gonna make this really challenging is the rest time. We're limiting it only 30 seconds before taking it into a two supinated grip. And we have a quarter rep at the top. So this is our second most challenging pull up variation. Try to limit using the lower body here. So try to make it all in the upper. Of course, if you don't have this TRX strap, you can replace it with your barbell rack pull up, pull up machine. And, or you can replace it with this dumbbell substitution. Just hinge it forward, supinated grip, and keep that quarter rep at the very top of the movement. You would be hitting the same exact muscle groups. 30 second rest before ending with a three, which is our neutral grip pull up variation, normal tempo, and you're taking this one to failure. Good technical failure. So make sure your form is locked in. Once your form starts to slip and or you can't get another rep in, your set has ended. Whoop, there you go. Here's your substitution. Perform it with a dumbbell. Keep the core tight, same exact thing. Once the form slips, set is over. B1, we focus on hitting those rear delts, maintain a tight core throughout, and pretend like you're taking those dumbbells around a beach ball. Long lever, so try not to bend the elbow. C1, we have a dumbbell stagger stance, neutral grip row, brace yourself with the offhand, really squeeze the lat at the top. The reps will decrease for sets three and four, so increase the weight on your final two sets. We superset C1 with banded single arm rear delt flies at a quarter rep at the hardest part of the movement. Anchor your band right around shoulder level, contract the back of the delts during the pulse. For our dumbbell bicep curls, begin with your most challenging weight selection while maintaining good form. So we start with our lowest reps and we'll actually decrease the weight for the set as the reps increase, getting a great pump in our biceps. We end this day with a tricep ab burnout. First one, hardest one, dumbbell double crunch with the legs extended. So you're contracting the lower abs and the upper portion of the abdominals and a little bit of lats as you reach towards the dumbbell. Don't hinge at the neck, so keep the neck neutral throughout. We'll then drop it to body weight lying straight leg lifts support the pelvis if needed with the hands. Use the lower abs to really stamp the feet towards the, towards the sky. 
limit the rest. And then we end it with body weight reverse crunches. So continuing to fatigue the lower abdominals here. And that's it for day three. Day five is a lower body day, focusing on the glutes, hams, and quads. We begin with these banded lateral walks, 10 each way, maintain constant tension on that band. This is a great way to warm up and prime your glutes. These single leg hip thrusts are deceivingly hard and humbling. So you may, may want to begin with body weight only to just test out the waters. If you find that it's, you know, doable, what I want you to do is add a weight to the lap and increase that weight weekly. Keep your hips level and really bias that leg and glute. B1 is the goat. Are you sick of it yet? You shouldn't be because it is so good for the glutes and hamstrings. Anchor that band if you have it available right around hip level. You don't have to use it, but it's going to add more resistance at the top. So the hardest part of the movement is right here. Three, two, one. This is the hardest part when you drive it up, but then we're adding that band for a little bit of extra something, something at the top. And it's a beautiful thing, y'all. C1 is dumbbell front loaded squats. Be sure to keep your core tight throughout and honor your range of motion. Everyone's range of motion will be different here. This is a great way to really strengthen the glutes as well as the quads. Maintain a three count eccentric throughout. Get ready to fire up those inner thighs with these Copenhagen plank ups. So hard squeeze into the bench and with that bottom foot. Now, if needed, all you need to do is decrease the, the, the lever by taking it to the knees. D1 is a barbell or dumbbell B stance bridge. So use whatever modality you have available. Hard squeeze at the top. If you have a weaker side, be sure to perform the weaker side first and match it on the stronger side. After the last set only, perform one by as many reps as possible with a bilateral stance. Again, again with good technical form. So keep the form locked in if the form starts to slip and or you can't get another rep, that's a good thing. We failed, high five, and let's move on. E1 is dumbbell walking lunges, and that is each side, y'all. So this one is quite tough. Good thing is the reps will decrease, but that's a trade-off as the reps decrease. So we can't keep the same weight. Challenge your weight selection. So if the reps decrease, increase the weight as long as you can keep your form locked in. You will perform F1 and F2 on the left side before switching and matching to the right side. First up, banded extra range of motion kickbacks at a quarter rep at the top. Spine stays neutral, really contract the glutes during the quarter rep. We then take it to extra range of motion abductions, glute medius focus, rep it out as many reps as possible. Be sure to count because we got to match it on the other side. G1, we only have one set, and it is also as many reps as possible, but only one set, so yay. A quarter rep at the top, burn out those glutes. This is our final lower body day of the week. After this exercise, y'all, we are done. High five. Onward to our final day, which will focus on the delts, back, and core. We warm up your delts and your back with these banded front raises to face pulls. If you have a super band available, use a very light one. You could also use a band with handles if you don't have a super band. For these banded pull downs, anchor it a little bit above the head. Keep the arms fairly straight to bias your lats over your triceps. Make that connection. Squeeze the lats hard during the contraction. We'll superset your banded pullovers with banded face pulls. Flare out the elbows wide. Really contract your rear delts with these high rep face pulls. 
Ooh, B1 is fun. We have dumbbell seated neutral grip shoulder presses, four sets, 10 to 12 reps. Your first set will be performed with a five count eccentric. Make sure it's five. It is tough. We then use the same exact weight for set two, which will be performed with a quarter rep at the bottom of the movement. Use the same exact weight for set three, which will be performed with a three second eccentric. Same weight for our final set, set four, normal tempo, rep it out. Hold on to something sturdy for these dumbbell leaning single arm lateral raises. This will just provide a greater range of motion, providing a deeper stretch in the medial delts at the bottom. For these dumbbell upright rows, take it in a circular fashion. So instead of keeping the dumbbells tight to the body, just go in a little semicircle to really bias the rear delts at the top. For these stagger stance semi pronated row, just keep the elbow at an angle to bias the mid to upper back. Be sure to use a challenging resistance band for these neutral grip rows. Hard squeeze during the contraction. You can perform in an L sit like I am here or in a seated position. Any seat, seated position will do. Set your bench up anywhere between 50 and 60 degrees. This will just provide a deeper stretch in the front of the delts for these front raises. Flip the grip from neutral at the bottom to pronated at the top, right around eye level. This will get a deep stretch in the front of the delts, greater contraction at the top. Try to maintain the exact same weight, drop it if needed for E2, which is a chest supported Y raise. We're working your rear delts here, but the main focus is the medial or outer portion of the delts. Keep the arms fairly straight as you make the Y with the hands. We end this triset with chest supported rear delt flies, neutral grip. So go around that beach ball, really contract the rear delts at the back position. Our final superset is one of my favorite ab drop sets there is. Body weight sprinter sit-ups. Really focus on twisting from the thoracic spine at the top and control it, don't flop down, at the bottom. After this set, try not to rest, try not to rest, and immediately take it to body weight bicycle crunches. Again, don't just touch the elbow to the knee. Really thinking about twist, twisting from the thoracic spine. After two sets, we are done, my friends. Nice work. Four weeks, let's do it. And then we got month four. Let me know if you have any questions below. Always here for you. You rock.